Rich Side K9. All right, guys, we are here with a pair of brothers, one at a time, super young, golden retrievers, very high drive, a lot of uh, sibling syndrome, as they call it, going on. And part of the problem with these two dogs, if you want to say the word problem, part of the issue is that their entire life, they had no rules, boundaries, or limitations, and they would feed off each other. So it was like the problems times two, or times 100%, right, with two of them there. Very little boundaries, very little limits. Now, they would pull together like their life was on the line, literally to the point that when we did the eval for these dogs, they came out, they got tangled, leash wrapped around a uh, juvenile female's legs, and the dog uh, pulled the female off her feet. It wasn't pretty. Anyway. We're going over feeding. From this moment forward, when they're here, because they're very food motivated dogs, everything they do, their whole purpose of the day is earning their food, okay? I know that may sound mean, but it's the truth. Because we have created an existential, an existential existence for the dogs, everything they do is about earning their food. And because of that, we can make them do all kinds of cool stuff. Um, big truck pulling up down here. Hey, face. Whoop. No matter what we ask, they'll do simply because we control their ability to live, right? Now, little man's on a long line, little string line. He's on an e-collar right now. E-collar is not being used. E-collar is on right now just to create an association. E-collar goes on, training begins, food comes in. Let me repeat that. E-collar is not being used right now, okay? But it's on to represent e-collar goes on, dinner bell starts, right? Remember when you were a kid, your mom rang that dinner bell? Yes. And when you heard a dinner bell, you come running. You can train dogs for that real quick. In this sense, we're using the dinner bell as the presentation of the e collar. Right? Great, no comment. Okay. Yes. Now we got some trucks down there coming up behind us. A little bit distracted, but that's okay. It's a good time. When you're playing with pups and you drop food, let the dog pick the food up. Don't waste your time trying to have them not pick the food up. It becomes so distracting, you'll never get it in there. Now, we can speed it up a little bit. Yes! Start getting them a little bit excited. Yes! Huh? Good. All right, guys, now we have the collar out. And all we're doing now is tap tone, deliver food. So watch this. Look familiar, right? What are we creating right now? When she gives me the behavior I want, tone, immediately following tone comes food. I am deconditioning the surprise of tone and upticking the value of tone in association with good behavior and food. This will all make sense later. Tone comes on, food goes in. Now we're gonna uptick it even more. We're gonna go tone, food, tone, 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 and stop tone. Think about what we're creating right now in association with tone, right? Later, when we wanna to use tone to get immediate attention, to stop a behavior, to steer the dog left, steer the dog right. First, the tone has to be valuable. Tone, food, tone, 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 tone. It's a lot, right? Am I using it like a clicker? Not exactly. I'm not marking behavior, I'm creating an association. Very similar, but it is different. Yes! Tone on, tone on, tone on, tone off, food comes in. Good. Now pay attention to how it's gonna work. Place, tone on. Tone off there, food comes in. Tone on, tone off, food comes in. Place, tone on, tone off, food comes in. Change the place up for a Harper dog, tap tone. Got the dog's attention, place, place. Yo! <laughs> Tone was on, tone turned off when the dog got on place, food comes in. Transfer, place, tone on. Come on, come on, come on. Tone off. Food comes in. Tone on, tone off, food comes in. Okay? Create that association now in a young pup. It can save your life down the road. All right, guys. Um, it's cold, it's raining, it's been pouring rain, it's, it's a lot, but we got to get our reps in. So I want to talk about something going on here with this uh, golden, cream colored golden. A little bit scared of the camera, a little bit scared of the camera, but another good distraction. You'll see something, a pinch collar and an e-collar and a flat collar here. It's actually a Martin Gale, but we're not using it. Now, why am I doing that? This dog 
is very reactive to stem. Any level of stem, the dog panics, scream, backflip, crocodile roll, it just panics, right? So we have the dog right now giving very light bumps on a prong, super low, level one low bumps on a stem. I pair them both together. So instead of giving a harsh or medium or even like low to, to low to medium correction on any one device, I'm giving super low corrections on two different devices so she can work through feeling different things. Now, this dog won't take treats, won't take a toy, has to get physical uh, tactile reinforcement with a pet right now, but we're coming a long way. So with tone, one low on the 550, which you cannot feel anywhere on the human body, and slight little bumps on a prong, we're having pretty good communication and we're staying positive and we've reduced a tremendous amount of friction and tension between myself and the dog. We're gonna do some healing. This was a dog prior. When the dog would come, she'd come out, hit the end of the leash, sprawl out, do a flat pancake on the ground, and then all four legs would be just digging. I mean, it was straight craziness. So we've come a long way, a lot of problem solving with this dog. We're gonna keep her going. As soon as we tap dog, Turn direction, little bump on the prong. Turn direction, little bump on the prong. She wants to go to the place. We don't have to go on our turn. She's used her whole life to pull it like her life depends on it to do what she wants. Place. Yes, mama, good girl. Now in the kennel, she'll take food from me. So in the kennel, a lot of our food motivation is on the place pad. So she's accustomed to taking that as good stuff. But outside, she won't take anything. Won't take food, won't take a toy. She really shuts down outside. It's, it's a unique thing. Put her in a box now. It's a new place. Come on. <laughs> you can do it. What is that? Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Got to do it on her own. Come on. What have you done? Come on. Climb. 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 Woo you did it. You did it. You did it. Good girl. Good girl. Shh. Sit. Wait your turn. Tone means come to me. Hold tone. Little bump on the prong. Good girl, good girl, good girl, good girl. Now we're gonna heal again. So that was a little bump on the prong with tapping of the tone to tell her I don't want her to go that direction. But the leash, as you can see here, is loose. Zero tension, zero. Yes, we gotta reward that one, guys. She just crushed that. We gotta stop training and mark that behavior right there, okay? She loves to get pet by me. And she will take food inside. She won't take it out here. Put her back in the heel. Little bump on the prong. Very light pressure, guys. Very light pressure. Short of that bump, everything has to be loose. Tension off. Tap tone, slight bump, step off on the left, right? That's it. Nice communication. Let her know what I want, okay? We're keeping it simple so the dog can always win. Really important. I'm going to bring her back. A little bit of tap to the box. Please. That's it. Little bump on the uptick, right? That's my girl. Reinforce commands. I want her to hold that place. Hopefully she will. Walk around. She hates being by herself. Come back and reinforce. Reinforce command. Walk away again. Now I'm going to call her to me with no bump on the prong, just a tone. A little bit of visual cue, me going down, right? Helps the dog to come in. But right now, we're trying to help the dog. We're setting the dog up for success. Rep after rep after rep, they learn a new condition response. And now we're gonna walk, tap tone. All her. Obviously, there's a little bit of back pressure on the leash just from the tension and the friction of the leash dragging, but it's a lot less than what I was giving, right? Yes! Oh, mama! Oh, yes. All right, guys. So we upped it a little bit. This dog, again, very reactive, seeks out attention, uh, breaks, and wants to say hi to everybody. So we're using self-control, self-capping right here, and the dog is just crushing it, guys. I'm using the boys just as distractors, having them walk around, having them rock and roll, change up their pace, put their hoods on to make it a little bit harder for the dog, give a little bit of reinforcement right there, and then we created more space and distance from the dog. So back it up. Make a dog pay attention. Verbal mark, she comes in for her reward, which outside is physical touch petting. And here we're just doing some healing around. She can do this off leash. However, I need to have quick little corrections to provide clarity there. And with her, um, the, the pinch is working so much better than any kind of E. And she's on both. So 
And for her to hold place right there between the two boys, I know this looks simple. It is simple for most dogs. Man, I'm, I'm so proud of her. And we start to walk back. Everything we do is structured. There's no free time. It's all fun. Look at the tail. Dog's doing well. We're walking back. And um, yeah, pretty excited. All right, guys, really quick. Some of you are going to say that prong is in the wrong position. I get it. Prong should be high, should be tight. It's too much pressure for the dog. She'll shut down, okay? We have to do everything slow, which is why in a garment it's on a number one on the 550. You can't feel it. Plus, I have my e-collar high and tight because I want the e-collar back behind the ear where I can use the least amount of pressure to get a little bit of result, all right? So pinch collar is lower because of that situation. So before you write me and say that pinch collar is lower, I'm, I'm well aware. But I also want to be able to give correction with pressure and have an immediate release of all pressure. Sometimes you see when the pinch collars are high and tight, pressure comes on, pressure turns off, but the collar is still tight. So there's still tension. I want on this dog for her to understand pressure on, pressure off. And when I say pressure off, I want all pressure off. So we're doing it a little bit differently, but it works for her. And that's all I care about is success for this dog, for her issues. And golly day, we've come a long way. So again, we're going to bump tone, pop the pinch very, very lightly, and always step on the left foot. You'll also see me give a little casting motion with my hand. Four cues of the behavior I want, okay? You ready? Here we go. Make sure the leash is loose. You see the leash? Nice and loose. She's gonna probably bolt to get back in the kennel. We're gonna anticipate it. Be ready for it. Correction right there. See if she wants to go back inside. Why does she want to go inside? Because good stuff happens in the kennel. Dogs aren't afraid to go in the kennel. They always want to go back in the kennel. I actually want her to pull me in. I'll tell you why I do that in a minute. I'll tell you why now. If a dog were to have an accident, break, run, get off the leash, I hope to God they'll run back to the kennel. And I always let them go here. So we do door drills, but when it's in the kennel, I like them to pull me in the kennel. It shows me they like the kennel. The kennel's a good time. I want them motivated, enthusiastic, a lot of power going back into their kennel. That way I know there's no negativity associated with it. Not they're resistful and pulling to get away and terrified and all this crazy stuff. So again, on my terms though, there was a slight bump. Pinch, I also hit one low, same time. I'm gonna mark it and allow her to do her desired behavior. Yes! Rich side K now. 